Anne and I were now roughly halfway through our tour of the three Caucasus countries, Azerbaijan, Georgia and Armenia. After spending some time in around Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, we are now heading for the town of Mestia, further to the northwest. Our first stop was at the beautiful Martvili Canyon in the Samgrel region where the Abasha River has created a magnificent gorge through the limestone rock. After boarding rubber boats and delegating the front passengers as paddlers, we zigzagged our way up through the gorge. Each boat has a guide at the rear to steer us out of trouble if the need arose. With its steep moss-covered rock walls, dangling vines and luxuriant rainforest vegetation, it was truly a magical place. The canyon used to be the favourite baths of the Dadiani family who ruled this part of Georgia up to 1867 from their palaces in Zugzidi. There is also a walking track that takes you along the gorge past waterfalls and rapids. After the gorge, we are off to Zagdidi and to a nearby tourist attraction. We were met at the gate by Marika Todva, the founder of the enterprise called Sisatura Ethno Village. Marika and her husband greeted us with a traditional Magrillian welcome, a shot of liquor. In this case, one made from plum. It's a something like wizard. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is the skeleton. Thank you. Mom is. Mom is. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> we then experienced a wide range of Magrillian dishes. Several toasts are also a tradition during a meal. For the love between women and men, for the love between sisters, brothers and all family members, for the love between two different nationalities, for the love Australians and Georgia. Nice. Cheers. God bless you. Cheers. As if we hadn't seen enough food, we were given a demonstration of how to make kachapuri, Magrillian style with double cheese. After the cooking demonstration, we went down by the lake. The original mill, used by the village to grind wheat and corn, was powered by the stream via a water wheel. There is also the mini village, which consists of authentic Magrillian structures and dwellings displaying old household items and traditional attire. And people somehow survived. There is no wooden floor because, because of humidity. Uh, in the middle they had fire and the full family lived in one house. 
they could have two or three houses, but with one room. I don't know why, but they prefer to have houses. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Heroes. But unfortunately, they are all disappearing after 1930s when Congress started big repressions. This is my buddy. He like continued with his stories about very beautiful Before leaving, we got to sample the Kachapuri. Marika is also a TV personality on a Georgian cooking show called Kitchen Wars. After spending the night in Zagdidi, we continued on towards Mestia, stopping on the way at the Yanguri Dam. Yanguri is a hydroelectric dam, currently the second highest concrete arch dam with a height of 271.5 metres. Construction began in 1961. It became temporarily opened in 1978, but was not completed until 1987. From the winding road through the Shikara Valley were glimpses of mountain peaks reaching 3,000 to 5,000 metres. From the balcony of our hotel in Mestia, we had a breathtaking view of the town and its mountainous backdrop. Sfan towers, ancient defensive tower houses, dominated the hillsides. Mestia, in the province of Svaneti, is a highland town at an elevation of 1500 metres. Crossing over the river from our hotel, we took a walk through some of the cobblestone lanes in amongst the towers and their adjoining buildings. As for the main thoroughfare, there was always something on the move. To learn more about the Svaneti region, we visited the Svaneti Museum. Originally founded in 1936, the now new building houses over 4,000 items and archaeological objects found in the Svaneti region. Included are unique samples of engraved and painted icons, religious objects and manuscripts. Among the unusual items on display were these signal spearheads designed to whistle through the air. Also these stones of sin that were hung around the neck to atone for a crime. This copper cauldron was used for cooking sacrificed animals. It was designed for two oxen or three cows and was available for rent. We were fortunate to be able to see inside a Zvan tower. The lower level that we entered would have been shared by people and animals, especially during winter. The animals kept in pens around the outer. Ornate carving was everywhere, 
including this men-only seat. Sea, waves, sun and the mountains. Children couldn't sit on the on men chair. There was storage for food and supplies and of course wine. Wine query here and the other one small for, for Rahi, local vodka. We then travelled forward a few centuries in time as we drove down the hill back to town. The weather this day was not great for the trip that we had planned for us. Travelling in four-wheel drive minibuses, we were headed for the isolated villages of Yuskuli, high up in the mountains. But we headed off on the assumption that the weather could only get better. After travelling for some time, we pulled over at some buildings. One of these was precariously perched above a fast flowing stream. The lone toilet there was particularly popular. The bitumen had now finished and the road was becoming more interesting. <laughs> Our drivers pushed on cautiously. We eventually arrived at the first of the four small villages that made up the community of Ushguli. This cluster of villages are considered to be one of the highest continuously inhabited settlements in Europe at 2,100 metres above sea level. About 70 families live in the area, enough to support a small school. The area is covered in snow for six months of the year and the road we had just travelled on is often impassable. On top of the hill is the 12th century church La Maria, or St Mary's. The small complex, including a span tower, is surrounded by a low stone wall to keep animals out. Anne went out on a limb to get a photo, hoping not to pay an unexpected visit to the cemetery below. The walls of the simple hall church have two layers of frescoes that have all but disappeared. La Maria is the Zvan patron of grain, fertility, dairy cattle and needlework. Our intrepid guide Natia let us on a walk down the valley to a spot where, weather permitting, you can view the Shkahara Glacier. Unfortunately, there was no view, with the mountain peak shrouded in cloud. But the walk did sharpen our appetites, so we were soon off looking for a local restaurant. On our way back to Mestia, we stopped at a tower built on a rock called the Tower of Love.
The story of the tale is that the beautiful daughter of a wealthy nobleman fell in love with a married man. From then on, things went pear-shaped, with the married man and his wife tragically drowning in the river. The nobleman's daughter was so saddened by the tragedy that she spent all her time sitting on the rock by the river, sobbing her eyes out. So her father had the tower built on the rock for her to live in, which she did for the rest of her days. The next morning, we took one last look at the view from our hotel balcony. Mestia was one of our favourite regions, and we were reluctant to leave. From here, we would travel right across the country to Anaclia on the edge of the Black Sea, and from there to a hotel in Kutaisi. Anaclia Beach Resort is the most modern resort in Georgia, with the construction starting in 2010. The interesting architecture, including Europe's longest pedestrian bridge and the best water park in Georgia, were designed by Spanish architect Alberto Domingo. It was off-season while we were there, and it was very quiet. It was also suggested that with the last change in government, financial backing had been withdrawn. We had to say that we had dipped our finger in the Black Sea though. <laughs> While in the city of Kutaisi, Natia took us for a walk to the very well-stocked Green Bazaar food market. Just about everything food related was available here. The popular snack food on a string is called chakilla and is usually made with grape must and flour with nuts and sometimes with chocolate and raisins. It is sometimes referred to as a Georgian Snickers. It was a good opportunity to stock up on some fresh fruit. The western wall of the market is covered with an eye-catching sculpture which was completed in 1985. Also near Kutaisi is the Gelati Academy and Monastery. Some of us did have our hopes up but the and Monastery soon put an end to that. The monastery and academy complex was founded by an iconic king of Georgia, David IV, the builder, in 1106. Gelati, or more correctly Gelati, used to be the centre of Georgian monastic and educational life. It also became the burial place for many of the Georgian kings. At the southwest gate, within the passageway, is the slab over the grave of David the Builder. While in the main hall of the complex, we were fortunate to have the traditional Georgian musical group, Galati, perform for us. The region that we were travelling through is said to have connections with Greek mythology, 
the legend of Jason and the Argonauts in the Golden Fleece. It was from Georgia that Jason was to steal the fleece, a symbol of authority and kingship. Gold prospectors in the region of Georgia to the east of the Black Sea would use sheep fleeces to line the sandy bottom of streams. Any gold flecks borne down from upstream would be trapped in the fleece. This method of collecting gold is believed to have inspired the myth of the Golden Fleece. Borjomi is a resort town well known for its mineral water industry. It is also known for the picturesque Borjoni Gorge and its expansive national park. Rows of hotels and accommodation buildings line the winding stream. Also, there are lines of four-wheel drives eager to show you the sights in the national park. We were there just for a walk in the gorge and to sample the mineral water. The bottling of the mineral water, which is supposed to have curative powers, has been a lucrative industry since the late 1800s. Even today, it is one of Georgia's biggest exports, if not the biggest. Most of us agree that it would need to be an acquired taste. Our accommodation in Elkutsik was a hotel built in the style of a palace and set within the walls of the Elkutsik castle. Thunder rumbled and echoed around the battlements of the 9th century medieval fortress. Originally named Lomsia or Lion, the fortress has seen many attacks and invasions over the centuries. The fortress was extensively rebuilt in 2011-12 and has been attracting many tourists to the area. This was our last day in Georgia as we headed for the border with Armenia. This amazing site is the Bardzia Cave Complex. Built in the 12th century under the rule of Queen Tamar of Georgia, what remains of the rock-hewn town consists of approximately 600 rooms located in several tiers. It was a perfect day to take the long walk up to the caves as the shuttle bus, which usually goes halfway, wasn't working that day. Natia took the lead as she knew the best route to take and to prevent us going around in circles or even getting lost. Bardzia has residential caves, springs for drinking water, churches, bakeries, wine presses, stables, barracks and stores, secret tunnels and internal corridors. The small church next to the natural spring cave features a fresco of the Lady King Tamar and her father, King George III. 
Bardzia once had approximately 3,000 rooms and served as a military base and also as a monastery, at one time housing 2,000 monks. What with the earthquakes and invasions by the Persian army, much of the complex has been destroyed, with only one third of the site now preserved. After that truly unique experience, we made our way to the Bavra Armenia Georgia border for our transfer to our next Caucasus adventure, the Republic of Armenia. In our last video in the Caucasus series, we experienced the sights, sounds and tastes of Armenia, home of the traditional bread lavish and of the musical instrument, the duduk, with its unique haunting sound. <laughs>